My name is Singa. Welcome to my channel, Authoress in Distress, and today we are going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Um, I have been doing pretty okay on my reading goals. I'm about halfway through, which is good because we're about halfway through the year. And yeah, so we're gonna do this tag. Nobody tagged me. I just chose to do it to keep for me and help you guys know what I've been reading. And let's dive right into it. all of my prompts on it so if I look down that's what I'm doing I'm not ignoring you don't worry about it so first number one best book I've read in 2020 so far um I chose red white and royal red wow <laughs> I chose the book red white and royal blue by Casey McQuinston I loved this book when I read it and I just want to reread it like all I want to do is reread it but I'm trying to force myself not to and um try to knock some stuff on my off of my TBR but yeah it's one of my favorites so far I highly recommend you read it it is about son of the president of the United States and the Prince of Wales and they fall in love and it's adorable and I love it so much ah it's so cute number two best sequel you've read so far the best sequel I've read would have to be Compete by Vera Nazarian I love the the Atlantis Grail series um, there are now four of them and I've been trying to reread them all year in order to get to the last one so five I'm finally on survive but to this day the best one in the series is um, compete and I love it so much it's really cute and yeah I don't know I have some problems with Vera Nazarian's writing sometimes but she definitely is improving as time goes on um, yeah so I really enjoyed it I highly recommend you pick up the Atlantis Grail series very good. Okay, number three is a new release you haven't read yet, but you want to. And I have an arc for this that I haven't read yet, and it really makes me mad. But the book is um, The City of Blood or something like that. But it's the new Sarah J. Mass book, um, the Crescent City series that she's writing. And I got, I started, because I had an arc, I started reading it before all of these um, different reviews came out that's like said that the first like few chapters are a little dicey and then it gets really good um so I started reading it and I got so bored and confused that I just stopped reading it yeah so I need to get back into it I really want to read it I love Sarah J Mass 50% of the time so um yeah so I'm really excited to get into it number four most anticipated release of the second half of the year and i have a solid answer for this most people are like oh there's a few books i want to pick up no i have an answer haro the ninth <laughs> by tamsin mirror i love gideon the ninth and i oh my god as soon as i finished gideon i went and looked up to see when harrow the ninth was coming out and i was really excited when i found out that it was supposed to be coming out early this year but it ended up being um later in the year than I anticipated it being and that made me really sad. So I am really excited to pick that up as soon as it comes out. I'm gonna get it on my nook and in paper just so that I can read it everywhere all the time. <laughs> Number five, biggest disappointment of the year. It's not like it's a secret by Nisa Sugita it was really disappointing to me. <laughs> Like, it could have been a really good book, but it just turned out to be boring for me. Mostly because most of the conflict was miscommunication or, like, not telling people things. And that's frustrating for me. Like, if you had just sat down and have a conversation, none of this would be happening. And I hate that. I hate the miscommunication trope. It, ooh. So, yeah. So, I was not a huge fan. I probably won't reread it. I'm glad I read it just so that I could stop looking at it on my nook wish list but yeah i wasn't a fan biggest surprise of the year that's number six i chose the gravity between us by phil stamper oh my god you guys this book is so good and i haven't seen a lot of people on booktube reading it or talking about it even if they have read it it's so cute <laughs> it's about these 
Um, so like NASA is launching its first mission to Mars, I think. And there's this, our main character is this guy who runs like a blog um, around New York where he shows everybody around um, each week. And he ends up, his father ends up being chosen as one of the astronauts that's going to go on this, that could possibly go on this mission. So he has to go to Texas to train. And so he picks up his whole family, including our main character, and moves into Texas. And they end up meeting all of these other NASA astronauts and their families. And the main character, our little, little boy, little blog boy, ends up falling in love with another astronaut's son and it's just so cute and mischief happens and oh it's just so good I highly recommend okay my favorite new author number seven is Kate Pentecost she wrote Elysium Girls the new western and I'm not a western person but I heard it had LGBTQ people in it so I read it and I regret nothing it was amazing I loved this book and I love the way she writes and I love her characters and it's just it's cute and it's adorable and you should read it I highly recommend but Kate Pentecost is my new favorite fiction that leads right into number eight favorite new fictional crush my new fictional crush is from Elysium Girls her name is Zoe she is the sharpshooter and I love her <laughs> yeah it's just it's she's hilarious her relationship with the other characters is wholesome and adorable but she's still kind of a badass and yeah I love her I would I would love to just have a cottage somewhere you know on the shore with Zoe it would be delightful number nine new favorite character so you might be like Sina Lucy is the name of your main character in your book I know this it has nothing to do with the fact that this is my new favorite character so far of this year and it is Lucy from Elysium Girls she is the best friend character of our main character and I want to be her she's just a fabulous black woman making her way and I love that we love that we stand I would be Lucy right somebody validate me I want to be Lucy <laughs> number 10 book that made you cry now I'm gonna re-mention two books because these are the only ones that made me cry and I feel like they deserve praise for that because for whatever reason I've not been in a crying mood for books this year don't know I usually sob during books and this year has been kind of disappointing about that so the first one is red white and world blue I cried on multiple occasions in this book but I also laughed really hard it is an emotional roller coaster of chef's kiss goodness okay please read it if you haven't if you like fantasy or fantasy it's not fantasy if you like romance then please read it it's adorable and then also the gravity between us oh, that final the final scene if if you've read it please please contact me in some way D dm me on instagram my links are down below but like i have to talk to somebody about this it's so, oh my god it was like so wholesome and I cried I cried I cried like a baby my mom was in the room it was embarrassing but I sobbed number 11 a book that made you happy so I couldn't pick because I like binged this series again so I could read the newest one um but it is ho either hoax or tempest from uh the author C.L. Stone I love her books it is the Scarab Beetle series that I'm talking about um she writes reverse harem books uh but this one oh my god it's <laughs> one of my favorite pairings that i've been buying for forever <laughs> is finally a thing in these two books and i just love watching them be adorable yeah i really love the relationships between some of the characters um particularly two of them um if you want to take guesses guesses down below totally valid I would totally enjoy doing that for you we could talk about it if anyone has has read this series because it, I swear to god I'm the only person on earth <laughs> but it's so good most beautiful book that I've bought this year is number 12 12 <laughs> and that's the most beautiful book I've bought and I would have to say we were promised spotlights by Lindsay Sproul I did not end up enjoying this book as much as I thought I would but oh my god that cover I'll put a picture now okay now isn't that cover so pretty like just so pretty 
Oh my god, I die. I die. I bought it because of the cup. No. They also said it like had an LGBT rep in it. So I was like, I'll, I'll do it. I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. I'll read it. The cover, this beautiful can't be a disappointment, right? Number 13 is books I need to read by the end of the year. I have so many. I have so many. I need to reread Gideon the Ninth before Hero comes out. I need to reread Gideon the Ninth. I need to read Crescent City. I need to read The Deep by Solomon Rivers. Um, and I need to read Save the Cat Writes a Novel because I really need to finish outlining my series and I'm hoping that maybe it can help me figure out exactly what I want, what direction I want to go in because I'm kind of debating between a bunch of different things right now. And I don't want to have to re-outline this whole series at any point. So I want to be happy with it before I go into writing it, um, writing the next one probably for the next panel I want. And the last question, number 14. I can have hand-eye coordination. Um, <laughs> my next, the last question is favorite book community member. Um, I decided for this one that I was going to just promote some of my favorite little booktubers that I watch really often that I really love. Um, the first one of which is Thanny's Thoughts. Um, I'll have them all listed down below in the description, so go check them out. But she's really sweet. Like, she's just a really sweet person. I don't know. She reads a lot of um, romance, and I don't know. I just like listening to her talk. She's very calming. But we actually met in the Olympus um, Readathon chat room, so I thought I'd bring her up. Um, yeah, she's really sweet. She's actually one of my subscribers, so hi, Fanny. Nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, but she's one of my new favorites. I've been watching her videos every time I get the chance. Um, yeah, she's really sweet. I recommend you check her out. And then also some other ones, Kayla Rose. She's really sweet. Her videos are really short. Um, I kind of appreciate that. I feel like my videos run too long, but I don't know how to shut up, so it'll keep going. Um, she's really into Harry Potter and fantasy, and she, I just like her. Then I have Problems of a Book Nerd. She is hilarious. I, she's just so bubbly, like so bubbly. Oh, she's amazing, but she is also part of the LGBTQ community, and I really love her recommendations. She hasn't really let me down yet. Um, Starla Reads, she's kind of a newer one that I've gotten into, but I think she's, she's just so sweet. Like, I just want her to be my fun cousin. And then Chanel Time is, um, I think she's kind of a bigger YouTube booktuber, but um, since I'm trying to promote a few black voices in here as well, um, yeah, she's hilarious. And I love her little, um, I love her collaborations with Sydney Re Cindy Reads. Um, yeah, they're like besties, but I just find them hilarious. I love to watch them rant about things. It's delightful. And then the last one is one of my favorites. I love her. I'll die on this hill. Um, the Wild Sasha. She is, I feel like she has to be just one of the most wholesome people on this planet. I stand by it. I recommend you check her out. She's amazing. She's, yeah, she's just so sweet. I just love, I just love listening to her talk. <laughs> so yeah, those are my recommendations. I gave you six of them, so you can go check them out. So down in the comments, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, debates, fears, anxieties, bad stuff, issues, complaints, irritations, leave them down there. We'll have a little chat. Um, hit all the buttons and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for being here.